Last year, the Retro Fighters Brawler Gen gamepad was released, and I admit I had little interest in the product. I mean, why would I need yet another wired controller for my Saturn when I already have plenty? Not to mention the fact the base Saturn pad design is already one of the best controllers ever made. It came and went with little more than me being aware of its existence until I ran across a buddy of mine that swore by it. He claimed it was the best $35 he spent for the Saturn, so I decided to give it a look myself. In this episode, we will be taking a look at the Retro Fighters Brawler Gen Gamepad, test it out with a few different hardware configurations and games, and figure out if this thing is worth your hard-earned money. The pad is first and foremost a Sega Saturn digital controller. It has a six button face very similar to the original, L and R shoulder buttons, both a digital directional pad and a thumbstick, and finally a start button and mode button in the middle. The overall design looks very similar to modern controllers from the likes of Sony and Microsoft. It's fairly comfortable overall with a nice rough texturing of the plastic. The digital directional pad itself is very similar to the Saturn's, not just in shape and feel, but also in how deep it is set into the plastic housing. The ABC XYZ buttons feel the same, but are raised a bit higher compared to the original. The shoulder buttons have a nice spring to them, and the mode and start buttons both feel like they should. We can look at this thing all day, but the proof is in the gameplay, so let's fire up some Saturn games and see how well it actually works. The obvious thing to play right off the bat was of course a fighting game. I needed to test out the D-pad responsiveness and how well it felt doing quarter circle motions and such. I was immediately impressed by how well the contours of the design felt in my hands. It felt like a modern controller, easy to hold and maneuver, with no sharp edges to run my fingers ragged after extended gameplay. The D-pad and buttons don't just look like the original Saturn pads, they also feel like them during play. Each button felt perfectly springy, and the directional pad was pretty much flawless. Every fireball, uppercut, block, jump, and position change felt natural and came off without a single misfire. Better yet, this was the case with just about every genre I tried. Jumping into Guardian Heroes, every click, movement, and press of the shoulder buttons came through quick and felt great. The combos flowed, the enemies fell, and everything turned out exactly like I expected. 3D fighting games need love too, and again, flawless operation with zero issues. The lightning fast gameplay of Sega's fighters came off without a hitch, and again, felt just as good as the original pad. I decided to try out a few games that had support for Sega's various analog controllers like the Racing Wheel and Mission Stick, trying to figure out if you could genuinely replace those peripherals with this pad's thumbstick solution. To be 100% clear here, this is not an analog controller. The thumbstick is actually mapped directly to the digital pad as a sort of mini arcade stick. The stick itself feels identical to the Xbox One pad, with similar range, resistance, and height. Space Harrier played dead on perfect with it, responding as well as anything I've used with it in the past. I also decided to give Sega Rally a spin around the track a few times. Here I was positive the thumbstick would falter somewhat since the original game supported the analog racing wheel. Yet the control was still quite good, and it responded well with the Brawler Gen stick. The real question was, how would it do with a game that was fully designed for analog control? Knights had gameplay you could feel when paired with analog control, and the Brawler Gen really does provide a close to authentic experience. Knights was about the freedom of movement in eight directions, and still being able to simulate the rotation of the original 3D control pad does wonders for the gameplay. I also decided to try out a few games that can be heavily reliant on analog control in regards to the smaller and finer movements of more 3D-oriented environments. 
While the library of games that this includes is rather tiny, you will notice a distinct difference when using the thumbstick on the Brawler Gen. First, in a game like Minx TT, you can't make the bike lean into turns and hold it like you can with a genuine 3D control pad. The same goes for creeping around slowly in games like Duke Nukem 3D and Quake, and you have to remember that this controller does not have analog triggers. Again, this is not a true analog controller, and it is not a direct replacement for one in the games that support it. One of the strengths of this pad is its versatility. Since it supports the Genesis as well, it was only fitting that I gave it some mileage there. My Revenge of Shinobi skills were not impeded by its design or functionality. I tore through bad guy after bad guy, blocked every attack that came my way, and easily handled it just as well as my beloved Genesis 6 button pad. I threw a few more platformers and running guns at it, racking up a few hours of additional playtime and the Brawler Gen never lacked comfort or failed to deliver what I wanted. The closely spaced face buttons really made every action easy to pull off, and again, that directional pad was flawless in its execution. I whooped a bit of ass in some Streets of Rage 2, beat down a few WWF superstars, and of course gave Street Fighter 2 a proper test. Pretty sure you already know the outcome. No issues at all. The comfort was there, the buttons always felt great, and each action of the D-pad came off as it should. Since this is a six-button pad with a mode button, I decided to try out a game that typically gives me trouble with it, so I started up the original John Madden Football. In this one, the menu selections are just too fast to properly set with the six-button pad unless you use the mode button when booting up. The Brawler Gen worked exactly like the original and started up in three-button mode properly. When using it for the Sega Genesis, the thumbstick picks up as the D-pad as well, so you can still use it, but it feels a lot less accurate for traditional 2D gameplay. This pad is also compatible with the Sega Master System. I decided to try it out across a few of that platform's games and had no trouble doing it. If you have a setup in the game room where your Genesis, Saturn, and Master System are all hooked up and ready to be played, this is a great space-saving solution to three separate controllers. While the review here is glowing for the most part, I do have some small issues with it that kept popping up from time to time. First, the thumbstick and digital pad are far too close together. I found myself hitting the thumbstick often during gameplay with a lot of movement and motions. Aside from being irritating in the tactile sense, it also calls me to miss time a few things during gameplay. You can adjust to this a bit by changing the way you rest your thumb during gameplay, but it came up enough to be worth mentioning. Second, it doesn't have the heft or weight of other Saturn controllers. It has a distinct hollow feel despite being well made. This is the case with the connectors on the console side as well. I wouldn't recommend putting any undue stress on the pad or its plugs. The Brawler Gen is also largely a visually unappealing controller, lacking any real color, branding, or outstanding design elements on its face. It's as plain Jane as they come. Replacing a working Saturn pad is almost laughable given its robust build, reliability, and sheer quality when it comes to 2D gameplay. Like I said in the beginning, it's one of the best. But should you have a need for a controller that you can use on multiple systems, this very well may interest you. Despite its lack of visual flair, it's a solid performing controller that works well with pretty much everything I could throw at it. It also has a generous 10-foot cord for those of you that enjoy setting way back from the screen. Since every game on the Saturn was designed to play well with digital inputs, that thumbstick still works quite well in the games I tried, but it's important to understand that it does not provide analog control like the original 3D control pad. The retail price of this one is $39.99, which puts it in a place where I definitely could recommend it as a multiple system solution. You can get it a tad cheaper on Amazon from time to time, adding to the attraction. Third-party devices rarely live up to the originals that they replace, but the Brawler Gen definitely puts up one hell of a fight. I'm SegaLordX, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.